Hello, my name is Andrew Moore, the marketing manager for the NI Science Festival. This evening, we're delighted to welcome geology curator of National Museum's NI, Dr. Mike Sims, as he talks about his exciting new research into dinosaurs in Ireland. We hope you enjoy. Well, dinosaurs, everybody loves dinosaurs. Uh, actually, I'm not terribly fond of them myself because they tend to steal too much of the attention from other more noble fossils. But what I'm going to talk about is actually Ireland's dinosaurs. Because there are some places around the world, North America, of course, is one of them, where you, you're almost tripping over dinosaur bones. They're almost everywhere, not quite everywhere. Um, and Britain's the same. There have been thousands and thousands of dinosaur bones found in Britain. But when we look at Ireland, we find there are virtually no dinosaurs at all. Um, where are they? What, why can this be? You know, should we be blaming St. Patrick for the dinosaurs as well? Well, I don't think so. I think there are other more plausible reasons why Ireland has so few dinosaurs. Well, the main reason, actually, is, is quite a simple one, that we have the wrong sort of rocks. A lot of the rocks in the south of Ireland, or virtually all of the rocks, are too old to have dinosaurs. They were deposited before dinosaurs had even evolved, so they can't possibly contain dinosaur fossils. And then, some of the rocks in the north of Ireland, this is up along the Antrim coast, magnificent scene here, these grey layers at the top, they are basalt rocks, they are lava flow, so they wouldn't contain any fossils anyway, but also they're too young, they're about 60 million years old, so they're too young to contain any of those dinosaurs uh, that we don't, the ones that we don't call birds. But so those rocks are too young. We've got rocks that are too old, rocks that are too young. But in the north of Ireland, we also have some rocks that are the right age, and we think, great. But the problem is they're deposited in the wrong place. They're the wrong type of rock. And we've got some here. Down at the bottom, you can see there's a patch of red rock there, and that's about 220 million years old. It's from the Triassic period, and that's when the first dinosaurs had appeared. So there are little dinosaurs running around. You think, great, we've got the right sort of rocks. But those red rocks, they were deposited in, in really quite an arid desert, which is a pretty lousy place for dinosaurs to live and very, very bad for preserving dinosaur fossils. So there were no dinosaurs in those rocks. And then above that, we have rocks, the limestone, the, the chalk, Ulster White limestone, which is about 80 million years old from the Cretaceous period, and that's a great time for dinosaurs. All the, some of the greatest dinosaurs, Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus, Edmontosaurus, they were living at that time. But these limestones, they, we, these were deposited way out at sea. And that's not where dinosaurs live. Dinosaurs live on land. So we're not really going to have much chance of finding dinosaurs in these rocks either. And in between those two rocks, we have the Jurassic period. In the Jurassic period, there's not much of it even preserved in Northern Ireland. Most of it is missing. But we do have... Lots of fossils, particularly from the Jurassic and Cretaceous rocks, and some of them are, are what I call thingosaurs. So we've got a uh, bit of the backbone here of a creature called a mosasaur from the Cretaceous period, from the chalk. And then over there we've got an ichthyosaur skull from the early Jurassic. And then we've got some ple bits of plesiosaur backbone there. And these are all saws, thingosaurs, but they are marine reptiles. They are not dinosaurs. So don't mistake your other saws for dinosaurs. It's a bit of a, a sore point, you might say. But amongst all the bones in the museum's collections, the Elston Museum's collections, we have a few fragments that don't fit into these marine reptile types, the mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs. So it's a case of, are these dinosaur bones? And they are all from the early Jurassic. And they're not very prepossessing, really, are they? They're just bits. They're not whole bones. They're certainly not whole skeletons. But that's the best we've got to go with. They're a bit different from the marine reptile bones. So how do we tell that these really are dinosaur bones? Well, one of the things we do is we look at the structure of those bones and compare it with the structure of the bones in marine reptiles, ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. Because they're living in very different places. An ichthyosaur or plesiosaur is swimming around in the sea it doesn't have to sort of, it, its weight is supported by the water. Dinosaur bones, they have to support their weight because they're walking around on land. So their bone structure is quite different. And of course, they evolved from, from different groups. These are plesiosaur bones, and they tend to be a kind of a bit solid around the edge, 
and a bit porous in the middle, lots and lots of little sort of holes, but not very distinct zones. It's just kind of a, um, it looks a bit like a burnt cake, actually. So very different from dinosaur bone structure. This is a dinosaur bone over here, a thing called Mayasaur from the late Cretaceous, so about 70, 80 million years old. Very, very distinct. It's got a hole down the middle, which is the marrow cavity that you and I have. Uh, and then it's got a dense layer of bone outside, which has these little tiny holes in it, full of lots of little holes for the Fertian canals. And when we look at our bones that have been found in, in Northern Ireland, we find that, that three of them seem to fit that sort of structure. We've got one here, and you can see quite clearly there's a big cavity there, and these sort of zones of little holes. Another one with a big hollow cavity and dense bone on the outside. And this one, again, dense layer of bone with sort of rather porous structure inside. So they fit the bill for being dinosaurs. And this was actually recognised a long time ago. Um, there's been a lot of hoo-ha in the last few months about the fact, you know, first dinosaurs found in Northern Ireland. In fact, the first bone was found 40 years ago, and it was recognised as being a dinosaur in 1989. But uh, it's a long story about why it's taken so long to get to the, the press, as it were. And this guy, Robin Reed, who was a lecturer in Queen's University, he was uh, an expert on dinosaur bone structure, and he recognised that this was indeed a dinosaur bone. And it got into the, I think, the Belfast Telegraph, but no further than that. He never wrote up anything more. But we've established that these three fragments of bones, I'll talk about the fourth little one in a bit, We've established that they look certainly look like dinosaur bones. But what we really want to do is, well, what dinosaurs do they actually come from? And paleontologists can actually work out what dinosaurs they come from by looking at the various bumps and nobbles and, and, and bits all over these bones. And from that, by careful analysis, you see they can reconstruct the entire animal from just a fragment of bone. And first, I'm going to look at uh, three bones that were found at the Gobbins on Iron McGee, which is kind of just over here. So you've got Larn just up there, Belfast down here. And that's the Gobbins, which, of course, the famous cliff bath. But a little bit further south from there, there are patches of blue clay from the very early Jurassic period, about 200 million years ago. And all three of these bones were found by this, this splendid chap here, Roger Byrne, who was a school teacher, but he was also a, a brilliant fossil collector. He could spot sort of lumps of bone, worn lumps of black bone on a beach covered with worn lumps of black basalt. So extremely good eye for fossils. And he found all three of these and he recognised that they were something a bit different and, which is, and he donated the museum which is how we have them now and how we've been able to discover what they are. So look at Gobbin's bone number one. Not a very Fantastic piece. These are magnificent sort of drawings that Roger did from the actual bones. And you can see they've got various sort of bumps here. There's a sort of bump sticking up there, which sort of uh, corresponds to this bit there. And you can see it's kind of, it's, there's a bit of shape to it. It's not completely shapeless. And that is enough to help us identify what sort of dinosaur it might come from. And the way we do this, or the way I did it, Initially, about 10 years ago, I took these bones to the Natural History Museum in London and I compared them with a huge collection of dinosaur bones that they have there to see, well, does it look like this one or does it look like that one? And it actually looks fairly close. This is our Gobbins bone number one and this is a bone from a dinosaur called Scylidosaurus, which is found in early Jurassic rocks, so it's a similar sort of age to uh, the Gobbins bone, found in early Jurassic rocks in Dorset. So, and it's quite different from this is the bone of uh, uh, a dinosaur called Allosaurus, which all uh, six-year-old kids will know about, um, which is a, a meat-eating dinosaur. Scalidosaurus is a plant-eating dinosaur. Allosaurus a meat-eating dinosaur. And it's got quite different shaped bone. And from the various nobbles and things, we can tell that this is part of a femur, part of your upper leg bone. So it's, it's kind of round about there, upper leg bone of... Uh, a dinosaur type called a thyreiform and quite possibly a scalidosaurus. So reasonably confident about that, but I am not a dinosaur expert, as will become apparent in a bit. This is what scalidosaurus actually looked like. This is actually a cast of an actual skeleton found in Dorset about 20, 25 years ago. Uh, absolutely fantastic fossil. 
uh, and it gives us so much information about what this dinosaur looked like, which we can then compare our scrappy little bone with. And so this is a skeleton, so this is where we think that bone may have come from. Some of the left back leg of a Scylidosaurus. This brings us on to that, that fourth little bone. I was going to say, because I've mentioned there are three that are definitely dinosaur, and this is the fourth of the trilogy, as it were. A strange little kind of pentagonal bone. These drawings here by uh, Roger again. Now, Scylidosaurus was plant-eating dinosaur, and it was covered with bony scutes, great lumps of bone embedded in its skin, and they were to stop it being eaten by large, toothy dinosaurs, you see. It's a good idea to be, if you're slow-moving, plant-eating, you need to protect yourself somehow. So I thought, uh, and so did Roger, actually, that these, this thing was perhaps one of these bony plates of a Scylidosaurus. Now, is it a Scylidosaurus scoot? But the thing is, it's not like any marine reptile bone, so we can dismiss that as a possibility. But whenever I showed it to turtle experts, because you might think it's part of a turtle, they said, no, 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 not one of us. Go and show it to the dinosaur people. And whenever I showed it to the dinosaur experts, they said, no, 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 it's not one of us. Show it to the turtle people. So nobody really seemed to want to own this particular bone. So it was a bit of a mystery, just lumped in as we thought it might be a Scylidosaurus scute. But it's not. When I showed it to a, a real dinosaur expert, not me, a guy called Dave Martill, who you'll see shortly, he looked at it, he said, no, this, this doesn't look like a piece of bone at all. It turns out it's a piece of basalt, basalt lava. I mean, who would have thought in the land of the Giants Causeway that you could find such an extraordinarily regular-shaped piece of basalt on an Antrim beach? Astonishing. So... That's one's out of the window. And this is uh, what Scalidosaurus may have looked like all those millions of years ago, 200 million years ago. Uh, a magnificent sort of painting by uh, Julian Fryers as part of the Ireland's Lost Monster sort of theme. So four-legged, plant-eating, armour-plated dinosaur on the lookout for um, bigger dinosaurs that might eat it. So move on to Gobbin's bone number two, which you might think, oh, it looks even more shapeless than the last piece. It's a little bit bigger. Um, it's got a very definite kind of cavity down the middle. These are the drawings by Roger Byrne. It's got a bit of shape to it, so again, we can actually try and figure out what sort of dinosaur it came from. So I took this piece to the Natural History Museum in London and compared it with various things. And this is a Scylidosaurus tibia. A tibia is your lower um, leg bone, the bigger one of your lower leg bones. And this is a Scylidosaurus uh, left tibia. And you can see it sort of flares out like that it doesn't really match this bone very well at all because we know that this end must be very near the end of the bone. And in fact, it looks quite like this bone here, which is a big meat-eating dinosaur from the middle Jurassic, a thing called Megalosaurus. So it looks as though this is what's called a theropod dinosaur. Theropods are the meat-eating dinosaurs, your Allosaurus and your Tyrannosaurus uh, and your Megalosaurus. So fairly sure that this is a, is a meeting dinosaur. And that in itself is amazing because you think, but you've got two fragments of dinosaur bone from the same beach, you would assume that they're going to be from the same dinosaur. And this shows that quite clearly they're not. We've got two dinosaurs, not just two dinosaur bones from one dinosaur, two completely different dinosaurs, which is fantastic. And this is perhaps what uh, that little dinosaur looked like. Megalosaurus is a middle Jurassic dinosaur. There's an earlier one in the early Jurassic, a thing called Sarcosaurus, which was, was quite small, probably only kind of a bit shorter than me. Um, and again, this is a fantastic painting by Julian Fryers. And we're pretty sure that a lot of these theropod dinosaurs would have actually been feathered and coloured, so uh, not the adult grey dinosaurs. OK, so that's the gobbins bones. We've got two out of three. One is a piece of basalt. Who would have you know, reckoned that? Two were definitely dinosaur bones, but a, a plant eater and a meat eater. Then there's this bone that I stumbled across in the museum collections in, uh, just before Christmas, a couple of years ago, found in Glenarm more than a century ago, and I looked at it and I thought, it's got this big sort of cavity here and these kind of small Haversian canal-like structures. And I thought, it's a dinosaur bone, it's another dinosaur bone. So I was really very excited about it. This is Glenarm up here. Again, it's lower Jurassic rocks, again, around about 200 million years ago. And the thing, as I've been saying, that what you do is you compare your bone 
with, with other fossil bones. It's comparative anatomy. You're comparing the bit you've got with the anatomy of a known dinosaur. And from its shape, this kind of a cylindrical bit, all we've got is, it would seem is the middle bit. We haven't got any of the interesting knobbly bits at either end. So to my mind, it was what we would call a femur, your upper, upper leg bone. And if we just take, take a chunk out of a megalosaurus femur, you end up with a similar sort of shaped piece of bone, you see. So know your comparative anatomy. But I'm not actually very good at this, as you'll find out, you see, because I got it wrong. So what you need to do is you need to get somebody who does know what they're talking about. And this is a guy called Dave Martill. He's a professor at Portsmouth University, and he's a, he's a world expert on dinosaurs and quite a lot of other uh, vertebrates, backboned animals. So he, he's an old friend, so I just said, Dave, do you want to actually have a look at these dinosaurs, see what you can make of them? So he did, and he said, no, no, that's, that's, that's not a dinosaur bone at all. And I thought, how do you know? Well... It's the rough and the smooth. It's something that only a real dinosaur expert who's looked at an awful lot of dinosaur bones would really know, and I didn't. You look at the Glenarm bone, and you can see it's got these kind of these striations down it. But you look at a real def definite dinosaur bone, this is a piece of Scalidosaurus bone, and it's smooth. And all dinosaur bones are very smooth. Uh, and bird bones are very smooth, because birds are descended from dinosaurs. This is something different. This is not a dinosaur. And Dave immediately said, no, this... The texture of this bone is much more like one of the marine reptiles, an ichthyosaur or a plesiosaur. And I thought, ah, right. And in fact, it turns out that what it actually is, it's a big chunk of an ichthyosaur jaw. This is an ichthyosaur, one of these marine reptiles, which looks for all the world like a dolphin. It's the reptile equivalent of a dolphin. And it's, this is just a chunk of the jaw. And it also explains why there's this great kind of almost like hole in the side of the bone. And you think, well, that's a bit odd for a dinosaur bone. It's a bit odd for a dinosaur bone because it isn't a dinosaur bone. And it was Dave that actually pointed this out. So that's another one we cross off the list. So we're down to two out of four. This is, what, this is an actual section through an ichthyosaur uh, jaw bone. And this is a section through the glenarm bone. And you can see very, very similar. And this sort of structure that they have with these small little kind of pores and things in it is characteristic of ichthyosaur jaws as well. And it, I think it's put there to confuse people like me who don't really know enough about dinosaurs to know when they're wrong. It also shows how important it is to get somebody who knows what they're doing. OK, so we've got just two dinosaur bones, and they're both from the, the early Jurassic. One of them is, is a, a, what's called a thyreophorin femur. Uh, and Scalidosaurus is a Thyreophorian dinosaur. We can't say for certain it's Scalidosaurus, but reasonably confident. And the other one is a theropod tibia, so it's related to Allosaurus, Megalosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and those sorts of things. Two distinct dinosaurs, and then we've got a piece of an ichthyosaur jaw, and we've got a flake of basalt, somewhat embarrassingly. And interestingly, that reconstruction in County Sligo has both of Ireland's dinosaurs represented. It has a I think it might be a Tyrannosaurus. Anyway, it's a theropod. And then it's got a Stegosaur, and a Stegosaur is one of the later Thyreophorans. Scalidosaurus was a distant ancestor of, of um, uh, Stegosaurus. So one of the things you ask is, is, you know, why have we got just two dinosaur bones when we've got the wrong sort of rocks? These rocks, the early Jurassic rocks, were actually deposited out at sea. So they're not the sort of places that dinosaurs live. But of course, every now and then, a dinosaur might die, it gets washed into a river, gets washed out to sea. You know, you imagine a cow kind of falls off the edge of a field, falls into the Shannon, and before you know it, it's out in the Atlantic, uh, where it's not great at swimming back to the land, sinks to the seabed, and is preserved there. So that's almost certainly what happened to these dinosaurs. These were ones that were swept out to sea, sank to the seabed, where they were buried and preserved. So we're very lucky to have them at all. Really, we, there shouldn't be any at all, because we've got the wrong sort of rocks. But it's worth remembering that we don't have much Jurassic rock at all. All we've got is a bit of the lower Jurassic rock. And then there's a huge gap of about 100 million years between uh, the lower Jurassic and the upper Cretaceous, where there are no rocks at all. And those are the rocks that would contain lots and lots of dinosaurs in, in Britain and elsewhere. Um, so there's this huge gap. But if you think about Ireland, and if we look at what we know Ireland or what Ireland is now, was like back in the middle Jurassic, say about 160 million years ago, 
there was a very extensive landmass, and at times, almost certainly, it was continuous with uh, Scotland as well. And almost certainly, there would have been dinosaurs walking around over this landmass. There's no reason to assume they weren't, but of course, we don't have any of those rocks. And if those rocks were ever deposited with fossils in them, they were long since eroded away. So we have no actual evidence of the dinosaurs, but almost certainly dinosaurs were present in some abundance in Ireland in the distant past. We just don't have fossils. So you can imagine that it's, uh, the fossils aren't there, but perhaps they're ghosts are there. And we can perhaps imagine what sort of dinosaurs perhaps roamed across Ireland all those millions of years ago. Thank you.